that was just a very brief uh, selection of highlights of the year to date. And what I want to concentrate on for the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes is presenting to you uh, a change that is underway uh, in the BTO. It's about the whole look and feel of the organisation. And it's about addressing that thing that I was told uh, when I arrived here, and I've been told a lot of times since that, since then by people out there in the wider world, that what the BTO does is absolutely fantastic, but not enough people know about it, and we're a best kept secret. Now change is tricky. I think um, particularly for an organisation like ours, which has a very strong traditional core, the whole idea, the whole concept of change is not necessarily straightforward or easy. And when I think about change, I think it really means for our organisation that it's not baby and bathwater. We're not throwing out the old and bringing in the new. We're only able to introduce the kinds of changes we want to introduce because the BTO has a, such a strong platform for which to launch, uh, from which to launch these changes and make a bit of a difference. And I think we've got a very, very strong opportunity to do so uh, right now. And the way people will understand and see this change will be through the visual identity of the organisation the whole way we look and feel from today. And we've chosen today, very importantly, to launch uh, this new identity. You're the keenest BTO members that there are around. You've, you've moved hell on earth to get here in the worst uh, weather conditions for quite some time. And we think you, therefore, have earned the right to be the first BTO members to see and hear what the BTO will look like as we go forward. Why are we doing this though? <clears throat> Just let's remember in the strategy that this is what we said we needed to do. Retain a high scientific pro profile, whatever we did. We needed a website that reached new audiences and attracted, and attracted new funds. Create a modern image that reflects this vision, mission and strategy. <laughs> And then some real targets, you know, increase the membership by a certain amount, the volunteer force by a certain amount, and increase our impact such that when we do go to events, people do stop coming up to us and saying, oh, I thought the RSPB did that. <laughs> In order to uh, get right what we're doing at this stage, we've undertaken some careful market research. And here's some summary findings. So what this slide uh, is telling us is that uh, those people on the left-hand side of that, uh, that table who are sitting in the room now, uh, to all intents and purposes, um, like lots of things about the way they perceive the visual identity of the BTO as it is now. However, even you sometimes tell us that we're rather quiet and recessive and that we're rather cold and we might not be as welcoming as we could be. And as you can see, by the time you get to the right-hand side of this, uh, this table, and for me, those are people I would want to get in the room here with us. Um, they're people who don't really know the BTO. They think all of the things uh, about our visual identity put people off. Dismissy, confused, drab, they're not nice words. So we, you know, we used the market research very carefully to determine that we needed to do something about that. That was the negative side. The good side is that what our market research told us was that we had a huge opportunity to do things quite differently uh, in terms of attracting and keeping members and volunteers. I was pretty shocked that the market research said, for example, um, volunteers don't feel as looked after as they used to do. That the website and the online stuff is really good, 
but it removes that experience that people had about talking to individuals in the organisation. Um, and I think it's easy for, 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 for us for, for us to become complacent about the way we do look after uh, our friends and family. So the opportunities are all set out here, that if you want to modernise and make the look and feel of the organisation different, these are some of the things where you need to concentrate your effort. Enabling people to progress through different um, survey schemes. Maybe Garden Bird Watch is quite entry level. Maybe the Breeding Bird Survey is one of the top flight surveys. But giving people the opportunity to learn and grow through that ladder of different surveys. Um, inclusion, being more inclusive. <coughs> enabling people to contribute. That thing that BTO members always say, I love doing the work that I do, the volunteer work, because my bit of recording contributes to a significant body of scientific information. And of course, science is very, very important uh, to this growth. We looked at the kinds of people uh, that we were engaged with, and it was really interesting. We all know that we're an organization where birds are extremely important. What we didn't realize until we did this was how important this side was, that there are people that come to the BTO because they love the science, and, and that's as important to them as the birds. So both of these sides of this diagram, uh, we realized were going to be important to us. When you look at where our, where our schemes and our surveys are, they all map into the center of this uh, diagram, where the members are, the passive members and the active members in the blue place where the circles overlap. And as you go out, the regular surveyors are the first group, the irregular surveyors, and then people on either side of that that may become interested in us but don't currently do surveys for us. So it was clear we had elbow room to grow here. And where the support might come from includes people that are coming from the scientific side as well as uh, from the bird side. So what, how did we figure out what we were going to do? We grew a careful process. Uh, first of all, putting a group together of council members and staff. So Keith Betton, who is still in Madrid, on his way back from Argentina from a month's birding. My heart bleeds for him. <laughs> He's on council because of his sort of airline expertise and marketing expertise. <laughs> but, you know, I have to question that now, because if he, of all people, is stuck in Madrid for four days and can't get a flight back to Britain, uh, I'm not sure about his expertise. But he was extremely helpful in this uh, branding process. Bob Harris, who is chairing the session at the moment, uh, was also in the group. Yael Evans, Jeff Baker, Laura Smith, who is our website design person and is probably right now busy on our new website, which you'll see in a moment. Mike Tom, <coughs> Simon Gillings from the Atlas, Kate Risley from Surveys, Ian Downey from uh, IT and myself. We all formed part of a group that looked at what we were going to do to modernize uh, the image. 